Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rome Overlanding. Now, today we are back at Rev House. Last week we sorted out the catch can and the diesel filter with Terrain Tamer, but this week we're going to be hooking up the new Osram spotlights. We're going to show you those shortly. So, I think what's going to happen is we're actually going to take a nice, relatively slow walk through the process to kind of show you the basics of what should be done when you are wiring up your lights. Either you can use this as a reference for yourself to be able to do it on your own vehicle, or if your vehicle goes into a shop and it gets lights done, you know what to look out for because many auto electricians out there or people claiming to be auto electricians, they'll hook up your overlanding equipment, but they've got no idea how to do it properly. So if we can at least educate you a little bit on some things to look out for, um, even maybe when you're buying a new vehicle, you know, you can have a quick look at the wiring situation and you can tell if it's been done properly or not immediately. So first things first, let's have a look at these awesome lights. So these are the MX180CBs from Osram. Now the CB stands for a combo beam. So it's got a bit of a widespread and a bit of a punch. So let's open these up, have a look and see. They are quite beautiful. So they, first of all, first impressions, they're a lot chunkier than I thought. Um, I thought these were gonna be quite small and they're actually incredibly well made. The brackets are strong. Look at the heat sink on the back here, it's just, these fins are just gonna really keep this light cool. And they're super power efficient. So these are 39 watts and they actually have, so you here, they've actually got a daylight running beam uh, or like the park light and then they've got their normal beams. Now these are meant to be tied into your high beams and they are E-rated lights, which means they actually stand up to all the European lighting standards and these are designed to match the output of a good quality high beam light, just obviously giving you a much better spread. I think we're gonna get some beautiful output out of this. I was really happy with my Osrams on the Jimny and those were just these little dinky lights. So to have these big boys on there, I think that's gonna be great. I think they look fantastic. Now, one of my favorite things with Osram is, it's just that, that German quality, you know what I mean? It come, comes with these beautiful water sealed plugs and all of our little cables here are already tinned for us to solder on our new cables. Our install on the Jimny, it wasn't the greatest. I wasn't happy with the quality. There were a lot of things that just, there was a bit of poor workmanship there. And moving forward, I've, this is why I've taken a really long time when I bumped into Adrian last week here and he said he's also an electrician and you know we got to chatting and stuff like that. I thought this would be a great opportunity for us to actually do a proper install. So we've got our relays here. I would have loved to have gotten a little box uh, with the relays and the fuses in it. You get these little water sealed boxes. Um, they didn't have any stock at the moment. So we've got that beautiful little fuse box. We'll pop our fuses in there. We're gonna run our two lights off of here and then whatever other things we decide to. I'm using a Bosch 30 amp relay there. So I think today is gonna to be really fun. I'm sort of know about the electrical stuff, but I think today is gonna to be really nice for me. Um, what I really wanna learn how to do is obviously all the switches and how to do the relays and all that stuff. So hopefully today can be a really fun episode where we kind of all learn a new skill after this. Um, yeah, but anyways, let's get cracking. First things first, I just want to get in there, disconnect the battery, get all the power off of the vehicle. Um, there's a little bit of stuff I need to do in there, take out the old solenoid dual battery charger. I just want to clean up that bay there a little bit because it's a little bit messy and there's just cables everywhere. So I think as much as doing all of this, there's a bunch of little things that I've been meaning to do as well. So let's get going. Yeah, it's nasty in there. So, here is a dusty National Luna solenoid charger, whatever. Um, comment down below if you want it. I'll maybe do a little giveaway. <laughs> I'm not gonna use this anymore. Uh, it's lived a life, but I think it's still got more life to live. And uh, anyway, it'll be free. So comment down below and then I'll do a random selection from whoever comments. Just say something like, I want the National Lunar Solenoid. Cool. 
Okay, so that is a much bigger pain in the ass than I thought it would be. And um, it's really difficult to get in all the nooks and crannies in here. So if you are buying a vehicle, <laughs> look under the battery. <laughs> so what I've done is I've put a rust converter, I've painted this whole kind of battery compartment here. And uh, hopefully that is gonna turn black and get rid of most of the rust. We can paint it, put the battery back in and continue. This has turned into a much bigger job than I anticipated. At least today, we've got most of that groundwork done. I think all I'm gonna need to do now is spray a bit of paint on that little battery compartment and then that is done and dusted. And then hopefully we can actually get started on the task that we are here for um, and get those damn lights installed. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get back to work. So this is what we're gonna start with. We actually have to strip a little bit of the dash because we're gonna be running some cables for the light switch by the driver's side there. But I wanted to show you a project that Hein and I worked on. Um, there hasn't been really a video about it. I did film stuff, but this is actually quite a cool little thing here. This is a, like this is the, the little cubby from inside the Hilux. This is the second cubby, the one that sits on top. And what we've actually done is we've installed some 12 volt sockets in here. So we've got a cigarette lighter, we've got some USB chargers, all that stuff, or some five volt sockets, I guess. Yeah, it's actually been really nice having all of these USB slots and stuff in here. But anyways, let the light installation begin. Adrian, do you mind just running us through the kind of processes that we're gonna to have to go through? Where we can, from when we start you at the light to all the relays, switches, everything, just so we have an understanding of the entire process. Yeah, okay, so firstly, you get different kinds of switching, positive and negative. Um, a lot of, especially the older Toyotas, are a negative switching on your headlights. So you just have to keep that in mind in terms of what you're using from the headlight to actually switch your relay. Um, we've done a test on this just with a basic test light and we found there's a common negative and it switches positive, which is great for our application with the switch that we actually have inside of the vehicle. So we're gonna tap in uh, because it's close to the battery on the left headlight because it just makes it easier for the loom because everything is going to come past this way past the battery to our relay which is going to be sitting there on the firewall at the back so we tap in on the high beam then we run that wire it'll go in through a grommet all the way through to the switch on the dash then we're going to come back to the relay from that. Now the reasoning for that is so you have like a you can have a two stage on your brights. So you would have full brights with your spotlights on. When it comes to your spotlights, by law it has to be on your brights. And then we use the separate switch. So okay, so getting back to the switch, from the switch we then come back, back through the firewall, and we connect to our relay. Now the relay uh, we've shown has the 86 and 85 connectors, which is your coil. That's your actual solenoid that uh, pulls in the connector. Uh, you use those two as one is your earth, which is your 86, if I remember correctly, and 85 is your positive, which will come from your switch. Then your pin 30 is battery. Now that's gonna come straight from the battery through a fuse to your relay on pin 30. And then pin 87 is going to go from your relay to your actual spotlights. That's a basic route that you can follow in terms of current flow. Okay, so I hope uh, Adrian has got <laughs> everything in his head and I'll leave him up to it. I'm going to try and do most of this all on my own, if not all of it. Uh, there's just one or two points where I'm a bit nervous like splicing into my high beam and stuff like that. I might leave that for Adrian to do. Um, but otherwise what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the battery out now and I'm gonna work on splicing together these two cables from the headlights. So obviously they're gonna join into one another and then that single cable is what we're gonna use for the rest of the stuff. This has been brutal. <laughs> 
I keep doing them the wrong way. But I've got it, I've got the first one right now. Uh, and it is working like a beauty. Now I've just got to get the relief one done. And then the splice is pretty much done. I might just recheck the others to see if I'm going to redo them. Because I feel like that might be necessary. Because they're a bit shoddy. I've just got to figure out how to redo them. But it's going good. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's all done. Nice and strong. Okay, so what I've done now is I've run the spliced cable through, put some sleeving over it, and I've run the sleeving to fast here, so we've got extra length. Then I've also cut off three cables, matching colors of these cables here. I'm gonna strip the ends off, crimp these together, and then again, I've left room here for whatever needs to happen. If we need to cut, if we need to pull, if we need to do whatever we need to do, crimp, we've got some extra length here. So then all three of these cables will be extended from the light here. Um, I realize now that the blue one doesn't have to be so long because it's actually gonna tie into the park light. So I've cut an extra cable here. <laughs> but anyways, we've got this. So now what I'm gonna do, just crimp the red and black from the lights here. And those are gonna end up going through over here to our relays and all of that stuff. Okay, so I have already done the heat shrink on the little individual ones. Now we're gonna push this big boy over here. This is the satisfying part. Let that just cover up there a bit. Grab our little lighter here. And away we go. Toit. Ah, perfect. Awesome, so now this is going to go back into the sleeving here and we're going to break these wires out where we need them. I mean, I think that is going to work quite nicely. So then the next thing I'm going to be doing is actually running, so you see here I've got the orange cable and I've got a black and gray cable. These are going to be going to the switch in the cabin. So what I've done is I've just run them around the outside and I've run them through the cabin there just to see what kind of length I'm going to be using. Um, I'll cut that off and then that's actually going to get fed through the firewall and we'll be able to link up that switch. These are going to connect to our headlights here to the high beam and the gray and black one is going to connect to the relay. I've got the two rolls of cable here which I need to cut off and those are going to need to be run through the center console and all that stuff to the switch panel over here. Here we go. I actually have a channel that we put in here when Han and I were setting up this little 12 volt system. So all I'm gonna do is kind of tie these little guys together, twist them, and I'm just gonna feed them through that channel and it's gonna take them straight through the dash and they're gonna pop out right by the switches. There you go, so now this will just connect up to our switch and that'll connect our high beams. The high beam is the orange cable and the gray is gonna be going to the relay. But yeah, then it's fuses and the relays. So all of the groundwork will be laid. All we'll need to do is do those final little connections and then we're pretty much good to go. Okay, so I went for it. I did the splice on the high beam. I hope it was the high beam. <laughs> um, and I've run that cable into a conduit and that's just waiting now for the relay. So I think from what I learned in doing the crimping and the splicing and all that stuff along the way, gave me the confidence to attempt to do the high beam one on my own. I didn't damage the cabling or anything at all, so it went pretty well. So the only thing left to do really is now the, connect up the park, the park light and then connect up all the relays Oh, we got to run some earths, so I'll run some earths quick, get all of that stuff done and dusted, and then we are ready to rock and roll. Hopefully we're going to have light 
by the end of the day. If you're wondering how I'm earthing it, I'm not going to the negative on the terminal here. I'm using an earth, earthing point on the side of the battery here on the body. So at the moment, just in the process of crimping a lug on here, which I'm going to use as an earth inside here for the switch. So hopefully this will work perfectly. I've cut the ends off just to make it a bit easier because it's one of those switches, uh, one of those nuts that you can't really undo properly. So you need to be done by 6.30 and in your car? Yeah, because it takes you about 15 to 20 minutes to get back. Okay, so we're going to do as much as we can before Adrian has to go home. This Adrian doesn't have to go anywhere because this is his, his life. But we have to respect other people's needs. <laughs> Now we just need the positive. Everything is about technique. Because yeah. now else I'm easy doing. it is. Yeah, I wonder what else I'm doing wrong in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here, aren't you? So you can learn. I mean, why do I have to learn so much? Why don't I just know things? <laughs> That's a question I keep asking myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fuse is in, relay is in. Nice. I think I uh, may have made a bit of a boo-boo somewhere along the line. So brights are on, but our spots are not coming on with our brights. So I may have spliced into the wrong cable. The professional Adrian is going to see <laughs> what nightmare I'm causing for him when he's supposed to be at home having dinner with his family. And just like that, we are out of time for today. So pretty much what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna wrap up, got the park lights working. We'll have to just fix up the boo-boo I made tomorrow morning. Uh, and then we're gonna just finish up the other little task we have. We're gonna sort out the little bracket for the fuse holder and the relay holder. Um, and then we are done. Anyways, let's get going. Moment of truth. Parks. Okay, parks looking good. Dims. Okay, have it. Okay, yeah. Lights. Uh, Spots. There we go. <laughs> you had me nervous there for a second. <laughs> well, that's a lot of light. Let's uh, neaten up finish what we need to get done here so we can check these lights out out on the open road so you can see here we've got all of our fuses in there and yeah otherwise everything's coming along really nicely we're just waiting for the bracket for the fuse holder and the relay holders and then we are good to go on this side just making all of the final finishing touches and neaten everything up I actually can't believe how much time it took but it is all done now, it's looking really nice. We've got a custom made little bracket here, which can hold up to um, three relays and a fourth one with a little bit of drilling. And then we've got our little fuse box there. All of our wires are running neatly and I'm much happier with how I'm utilizing the space now uh, that the secondary battery is out from here. It is now night time 
and uh, we're gonna test out the new spotlights. So for a comparison, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have just the standard headlights, which just so you know, are not standard Hilux headlights. They I have replaced the globes, um, so they will be even brighter than um, a standard Hilux already. So the difference you'd see from a standard Hilux to the spotlights is gonna be even better. I'm super stoked with the new Osrams. Uh, they are seriously, seriously powerful in comparison to my high beams. So it's definitely gonna be felt when we get off road, when we get into the really dark and rural parts of the country. But let's get back to the workshop and round up this whole experience. I guess one of the most fun things is that I got to do it myself. And I got to get my hands dirty and really get in there and learn about it all. But that satisfaction of flipping the switch and putting on the high beams and seeing those spotties come on, wow, that was really awesome to see. Even though we've had a couple hiccups along the way, you know, I'm super impressed with how these Osrams are performing. Uh, they're super bright, but just it's the quality. It's not just about the brightness, it's about the quality of the light. And I must say, I'm really, really happy with them. And I'm glad I didn't go overboard and put lights on the roof rack and all that stuff and just kept it simple with two really nice quality spotlights on the front of the vehicle. And I honestly see this giving me so much more confidence driving at night and things like that. It's not that you want to, but when you have to. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning into this episode. I hope you learned you know, a bunch about wiring up lights and all of the things that, that go into it. If you're looking for a workshop to do your lights and stuff for you, you can always come over to Rev House and Adrian and Donnie will be happy to help you guys out. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you again next week. Cheers.